Okay, well I lied. Uh, I guess I'm not done. Um, I guess this will be a three-parter. Um, I probably could have done this uh, maybe separately, I guess, but whatever. I'm doing it right now. Um, this is kind of the newest uh, addition to the, 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 the greater Gwangamun area. Um, it's not necessarily part of the Chungaecheong, as far as I know. I mean, this is kind of separate. Uh, the the big um, now I'm actually I'm gonna have to read this because I always thought this statue up here. I always thought that was Yishun Chin, Yishun Chin. But I know this is supposed to be like this intersection here, this junction is supposed to be the uh, like Sejong Samgori or Sejong Sagori, I believe. Considering this road here, this big road that goes back down that way towards uh, Hongjimun is uh, Jongno, like Jong Road, basically. Say Jong Jongro. I'm pretty sure that's right, but that could be wrong. Um, and unfortunately, it looks like they're doing construction over here, so you can't see the. Um, camera went all blurry there for a second. So unfortunately you can't see like the neat uh, like water uh, displays they have going on here, especially during the summer. So that's kind of a bummer. Uh, and actually, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna, uh, yeah, this has definitely got to be uh, East Engine because you can see there at the foot of the, um, the statue there, you can see that was one of the old turtle ships that he was famous uh, he was famous for using because he well he was, was he rose to the position of admiral, uh, I believe, and he used these turtle ships, which were they were armored ships, um, and I believe they, if I'm correct, they had cannons inside the mouths of the uh, the dragon there. So I guess you wonder why they wouldn't call them dragon ships, but obviously since they're all armored like a turtle. Um, that's probably why they had their name. But I believe they had cannons up in the mouth, and I don't think we'd be close enough to actually see. Maybe that's something in his mouth, I'm not sure. But, uh, anyways, uh, Yi Sun-jin, he was famous for, um, fighting the, the, uh, off, um, Japanese, in, uh, invaders back in, uh, was it the 1500s? I think it was the 1500s. I, I could be off. 100 years or so. But what's 100 years in history, right? <laughs> Probably a lot. Um, yeah, but you can see they got this carving on the side here with all the turtle ships and whatnot. And the Japanese tried to invade a number of times. And uh, Yi Sun-shin was made famous again for, for fighting them off. Uh, and he utilized the turtle ships. Um, very masterfully, in a way, and, uh, and was often able to fight off uh, forces that were much larger than his, I believe. Um, I'll, I'll, link, uh, I'll, I'll link some, some, uh, some stuff up on, on, the, on the info part of um, on, on YouTube there on the side so that you can you can check that out um, because I don't want to be lying or extremely inaccurate with what I'm saying um, but I think that's kind of the gist of it um, and yeah so he's kind of like a national hero um, now I was mentioning uh, Sejong or Jongno and the, the Sagori the intersection Jong, uh, Sejong was considered well uh, I guess they used to say Sejong Dewang, Sejong the Great King. He was considered the greatest, possibly the greatest ruler ever in Korea, greatest king ever, possibly. Um, if, if at least the greatest uh, king during the Chosun period. Um, and he's actually, uh, the king was credited with, credited with um, having uh, Hangul, the, cur the current Korean alphabet, formed um, as a uh, unique and uh, purely Korean way of um, writing the Korean language. Before, they basically just used the Chinese characters just with Korean pronunciations. Um, and even up until, even up until the, the past century, uh, they used 
I guess Hanman, I guess you'd say. Uh, I believe that's what it is. I could be wrong. As always. Um, they used that uh, along with, with Hangul to, to write, but as um, after the Korean War, well, after the World War II and then the Korean War, well, actually, probably during the Japanese occupation as well, um, I don't think it was utilized as much. I mean, he just used the Japanese characters, which are obviously the same, just with Japanese pronunciations and whatnot. Maybe a bit different, because the Japanese have a number of different writing systems as well. But, um, yeah, after the, after the uh, World War II and then after the Korean War and the splitting of the country, um, you had uh, South Korea still used a bit of kind of a hybrid system of, of the, like the Hanmun and the Hangul, um, but progressively um, began to use the Hanmun less and less, and now pretty much, well, most signs are just in Hangul. It's just, some, you know, that's, that's the alphabet um, that they use. Uh, and just makes everything more simple. In fact, a lot of a lot of students now don't really even study uh, the, the Chinese characters that much. Maybe a little bit. They might know how to write their name, a few important things, but they really don't study it too much anymore. Um, and here we go. Yeah, as, as I was saying, um, Sejong Dewong. Uh, here's a big old statue of him. It's pretty nice, and you'll be able to check, check that out. Let me see how much time I have left here. Okay, well, we only got about two minutes, so I'll. Um, I'll get up in here real quick so you can take a look at, uh, at Sejong Dewang. And if uh, there was any confusion on who this statue, uh, I want to see if I can get the focus back here again. If there was any confusion on who this guy is, well, you can see there in Hangul, Sejong Dewang. So it's pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. Um, and you can see him there, he's uh, dictating something from a book or something most likely uh, to represent, you know, his um, academic prowess as, again, the kind of the founder of Hangul and uh, the modern Korean writing system, which some people claim to be um, one of the most scientific and logical forms of writing of, of any language in the world. And I can definitely say that it's... Uh, Compared to probably other forms of writing, it's pretty simple to learn. I mean, you really can um, you can really kind of figure out how to write a lot of the stuff and, and pronounce things um, in, in, a, in a fairly short amount of time. Um, some people say four solid hours of studying, you can you can start pronouncing most things in writing. I'm not sure if that's exactly correct, but um, I wouldn't be surprised for some people. Other people will probably take more time, but. Um, yeah, it, it's really pretty, pretty, uh, a pretty neat writing system. Um, maybe it doesn't look anything different than like Chinese characters to some people. Then it's like kind of more just straight and uh, or circular, but um, it's it's quite a bit different. Each of the those characters you would say are actually made up of, of letters. But again, I'm running out of time, so I'm gonna cut it off here. Um, I hope you guys like this little uh, side detour that wasn't planned. Um, yeah, I'll talk to you guys later. See ya.